Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Captain Encrypted and we are back with more gorgeous and resources. A little bit of time has passed, that's our medical helicopter picking up some people. So let me very quickly catch you up on what has happened. So I've been pretty much dealing with our loans, decreasing them, paying them off, get more loans, replace vehicles, all the exciting things. Our television station is ready. Currently on loyalty over 45%, set with 40% cultural enjoyment and 60% social propaganda, just to keep pushing that loyalty up. We're at about 60. We'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. I forgot that the game introduced a new hospital, and I'm like, ah, oh, cool, I'll just put it over here. But then I realized that um, not many of my people can reach it. <laughs> so that was interesting. So I decreased the amount of people and I actually had to put another one over here. So instead of tearing it down, I think I'll just put a few more houses on this side. Our population is up to 14,000. Nice healthy population. We got about 167 with no workplace, but that's because to our traffic frequency. And as I mentioned on the previous episode, I really plan on pushing that population up to about 15,000 just in this city. So we have a few more Dnieper flats. If we look at our overlays, where are you? Nope. Uh, three flats. So we have room for another 1,200 people over here. So they have some people. And since a lot of them cannot reach my train station, instead what I did is I put a bus station over here and I have a row of buses picking the people up dropping them off and from here they go where they need to go to work on our industries they start from the bus station they go to the large train station and then they drive down this street they go into this one-way road that leads into this bus station and they come out of here they loop around and they repeat the process this way their traffic is contained on this side where there isn't really much traffic of course, since we keep expanding our population, we need more heating. So I put another heat exchanger over here, another heat exchanger over here. Have I connected them? Yes, I have. And as I hinted on the previous episode, I put a second heating plant over here. Both of them are right next to each other, and they can be reached by the people through the cableway station. A large school, because we have kids that need to get educated. Uh, Sports of Dynamo, uh, Palace of Communism, because people need a lot of resources. We have our shopping center here ready to pretty much serve all the people around this area. Because without that much population, just the Okean supermarket wouldn't be enough. So, same principle as above, I gave them a cargo station. And actually, I think I gave them the wrong one. I think I only gave them the one with the two. Yeah. I should fix it at some point if it becomes a problem, but we'll see. So far, so good. Our prisons are doing okay. 42 people are kind of a lot for what I want, but we'll work with it. At the moment, we're not giving them anything negative, so we are reducing the criminality, we're increasing their loyalty a little bit, happiness and culture. I do not know how you increase your culture in prison, but it's what it is. Our waste area over here is ready, and it is taking care of stuff. I have a few buses going back and forth, bringing people to consume our mixed waste and hazardous waste. I haven't started with the hazardous yet. I'm still piling it up over here. And that's because I haven't bought any chemicals. I plan on starting our chemicals probably on this episode or the next. So that's when I will actually enable this. Start with the changes in terraforming. So I've been terraforming this a little bit, trying to flatten it out because I want to turn all of this into fields. And what I'm thinking is I'm thinking of using the cheat menu to remove the gravel from here so they can actually be fields. Just to clear those. And I don't know if I want to do it on this side as well. To convert all of this into a massive area of fields. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And of course we're going to plan to move this industry out which will happen in this episode. Because I need this gone, I need to terraform it, fix it up and... Probably in the next four or five episodes, I'm going to have a look again at our train lines and try to improve our, some of our paths, some of the first paths we lay down. 
I did fix this over here because it was a bit of a nightmare with a single with a single line. So now we have three. Just to give you a quick look. Pretty much choose which way you want to go. That goes two ways. That goes two ways. So if something needs to go in the depot, they can go into the depot or come out of the depot without blocking this line. And over here we have a mixed signal. Choose which way you want to go and you can go both ways. Pretty straightforward. Now, earlier when I looked at the workers, I realized that I have about 322 people who cannot study. While I do have the halls of residence over here, they only take people who want to go to university that are of the age of 21, not the younger ones. So this effectively keeps them away from my workforce, and I don't want that. And also that's for people who haven't finished their education by the age of 21. So that will be just my little buff. So I went on the overlays. So I went on the overlays over here in the city to see who doesn't have access to uni. And I realized that these houses down here don't have access to uni, and so does those two. So instead, I put a little small headquarters of the party. It's relatively inexpensive. And these, with a good footpath, can reach all of those houses pretty comfortably. And volume-wise, it should be enough as well. Because at the moment, the split is... I mean... 42% are low education and 58% is higher education. My understanding is that workers that are of lower education, they might buy radios, but they won't really buy other electronics. So propaganda is less effective on them. While workers with higher education will favor electronics a lot more, that's why they consume a lot more, and are more susceptible to propaganda. Excuse my voice today, it's being a bit funky. Next, our monstrosity of an oil field is ready. So all of them are built. I've been setting up a few new roads. I wanted to enclose it, so I'm putting some prefab walls around it with some fences, just to give it the look that, yeah, this is a sealed off area. And the funny thing is, this monstrosity actually works. When our train comes here to load, it doesn't make a dent. Like, it doesn't even empty all of them. So we can pretty much run the refinery at almost full capacity. Right now I'm running it at about 280 people, I think. And I'm really not making a dent. 250. So I'm running it at 250 people. They are consuming this and this one is unloading. My bottleneck now is becoming the unload speed, so I might need a second truck or some or a second train or something. Um our gas power plant is producing and our steel industry is producing as well. We've been utilize we have been making a lot of steel and actually using it for a lot of our build projects. Now, steel industry produces metal scrap. So we take the metal scrap all the way to our refinery over here, Whoop, over here, and we convert the metal scrap into steel. So we have another source of steel over here. So we're generating a large amount of steel. Not as much, not as, much as I would want it yet, but it's a very good start. Also, I should probably fix this. Only store steel. And speaking of the refinery, so this is the fuel I'm using for the Republic. So, at the moment, my Republic is stopped up and I have this much surplus. And then this is what I'm selling, so I have another 280 tons to sell. Bitumen, 300 for Republic needs, and 1400 to sell. So, I cannot sell it fast enough. That's why I had decreased the workers. Where's the other train? Where are you, friend? Uh, you are at the custom house selling 600 tons of fuel. Or you're going to the custom house. So I put a couple more tankers on this. Got it up to 126 meters length. And we're moving 600 tons at a time. But even then, it's still not enough to keep up with the production of the refinery. <laughs> Additional things that I've built. So this setup is ready. And fully built. I put a star over here so it affects the workers. And I decided to put a plastic factory down here at the end. 
And the reason for that is, if we look at plastics, because we're going to need plastics anyway. But to make them, all you need is chemical, oil, and power. And we produce the chemicals here and store it here. We have a pump over here to give it fuel directly. Sorry, not fuel, oil directly. And we're bringing oil directly from over here, from our refinery. So we have a constant supply. And that will help us generate what we need to keep things going. Next, we need to boost our water production. And if you see here, our production is at 100%. So things are starting to get a little tough. We are okay for now, but we are starting to hit that threshold. Especially with our food industry, because it's consuming a bunch of water as well. So what I did is... I went over here, right next to our heating plants. I placed two big water wells with a little waste collector over here. Two big water pumps. They will get people from this cable away station because I have plenty. So that will be very easy for them to just walk there, generate the water at a consistent rate. Doesn't matter if it's winter or anything else. And they will both have two pipes going all the way to a new water treatment plan in this area to support the city and then we will connect we'll change the flow we'll cut the flow from here and move it there and from here i'm also taking an additional line with another pump and a bunch more switches to bring drinkable water to our new industry which we will have a look at in a minute also, from here, I have another pipe going out into switch. These will be our unclean water, which we will use for our chemicals and any other industry that requires low quality water. And of course, if we need to, we will increase it. If we need more production, that is. I put a little switch discharge over here. Right next to the chemical factory, I was playing around with the terrain to try to make it fit. And connected everything, so... From over here, the waste processing goes into switches. We're building another one over here that will service this area. Which get dumped over here. Our chemical factories, through a bunch of switches, connect over here. So the rest of my factories will also connect on this. And then I have an extra line if I need it. I should have probably sent that a little bit to the middle, but that eh, never mind. Back to the monstrosity of an oil field. I did extend the road all the way to the border and I placed down a foreign pipeline connection and a foreign power connection. And since I have such a good production of oil over here, I decided to queue another gas power plant for additional power for our republic and exports. Since all this thing will do is just support the Republic with a bit of extra power in case there is an emergency and exports. So just pushing our income up more and more and more. I did clean this area up a little bit and I named it construction materials because I decided this is where I'm actually going to place my um, asphalt production, cement production, all of those fun things. And now for the elephant in the room, this is our um, area where we're going to set up all of our production. Someone made a comment on one of the previous videos about the gravel cores that you don't need to. I do realize that. And only one gravel processing is not enough to fully saturate it. But that is why I have intentionally left a connection over here. So if I ever need to scale this up, I have the option. I'm not going to build the second one yet because I don't need it. But it's there and planned in case I want to start scaling it up. Connected this train line up over here. I'll need to fix some of those nodes. So it's one thing. Let's get you out of the way. Very good. And what is this little area? Well... I said I'm going to bring our food and alcohol production over here, same with the clothes industry. So we will need to bring crops. And this is a grain, a big grain silo, the 11,000 one. Put a little bit of a roundabout here, connected to a road cargo station. 
so we can take things from here and send them across to the chemical factories as we need and top up any other industries we might want. I don't know if I will connect this directly or if I will get a train line going out. So I have a smaller train literally just loading from here, going down here and acting as a buffer for those factories. We're going to see. And then I put a little distribution office over here for... I'll make it for fuel. It only needs a few vehicles, and the reason is I want to utilize its connection to keep pretty much the forklift over here fueled up, whatever other little fuel things I have in this area, so I don't utilize the big one for the city. I want its area to have its own sort of distribution. And to support that, I put a um, fuel loading and unloading pump over here and a little fuel storage. Since I'm producing an abundance of fuel, I can just load it over here and have these to be used only in this area to keep this going, because the things down here will require fuel as well, and the vehicles that will be passing back and forth will require fuel as well. I terraformed a little bit more. I started cutting down on this mountain and got across, just so I have that option to go out and made this mountain smaller and I put a little bit of a second iron mine over here in case I need it I have posed it I'm not gonna build it up yet gave them an underground tunnel so they can reach up with the workers and it connected direct over here the remaining yield around the area is pretty much like 15 percent so like 15 16 12 so there was no reason maintaining that mountain instead I decided to chop it down and utilize the space. Also forgot to mention here where we have the new gas power plant. I'm pulling from this pump. I have a little 300 ton storage over here as a buffer, just to keep this going at all times. I set this setup over here to collect the waste from the starter city. And we're looking to tear down pretty much all of this infrastructure beside the water. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the water yet. So we're going to tear all of this down when our gravel industry is ready on the other side. Tear this down. And maybe start expanding our city a little bit here and start cleaning all this electricity. My ultimate goal with electricity is to use priorities. And with those priorities, I want to have renewable energy that will be consumed first, then energy that I produce second, and third will be energy that I buy. So, at all times, I have a steady supply of energy, and if I need to buy some, I'll just buy some. Also, I bought more used vehicles, so they've repaired some of them, so I have a few old train sets. So, 16 years old, 6 years old, at 18% at the moment, that's fine. And this is at 15, which is almost 6 years. Just so I can keep ferrying my people back and forth, and start getting those other industries going as well. Just a small amount of vehicles running out to start construction. <laughs> and the chaos ensues. Let's have a look at the train loading. I think I'm going to give it a couple more wagons. Just so it can transfer more across. So it will start loading. Everything is on fire, the usual. So every pump has an internal storage of 15. So let's see, will it empty all of them before it starts doing this? Also, you will see that they always load two wagons at a time. They can never load more than two wagons at a time. That's an interesting game limitation. So, we did drain these, we're draining these, and there is a few more over here. So, yeah, this is now full. So, if I add two more wagons, they will be able to fully empty this and make a little bit of a dent on this. I think I'm just going to buy a couple more tankers, attach it to this one, so we move about 600 tons at a time. Okay, and I actually upgraded to a bit of a faster DR class with 120 kilometers maximum speed, and now we have two, four, six wagons. So, let's hope this will make a dent in our production. Okay, so 720 transferable oil is enough. To clean all the build up from our pumps and actually start picking up some of what's on the actual storage. That's great. I'm very, very happy about that. This is the first time I managed to have so much oil. 
And we're not gonna stop there. I'm gonna make another monster oil field. What is uh, more oil? So there's more oil over here. And so we have... Where is it? So we have uranium here, we have bauxite here, and oil over here. So these three areas, and uranium, and uranium. So these three areas will be really heavy in harvesting. We finished unloading, and it's back for more. And let's see how much... Yeah, they pretty much refill by the time it's back. Which is pretty amazing. Our loans are down to almost 5 million, which is pretty good. I've been consolidating some of them and our interest rate is dropping. We're down to 4.5, so I can drop it even more if I want. I think I'll just leave it until the end of the year so it can close a couple of them. Selling all this extra bitumen and oil has actually helped me reverse this. So I think the plan is skip winter, let them finish building the water infrastructure because the population decimates us. And then when I'm back, I'm going to plan the construction material area, the food, fabric, alcohol factory. And I think that will be all for this episode. See you in a minute. And now that we got winter out of the way, I extended these roads over here, placed down a bunch more farms. I removed the gravel from over here just so we can utilize this. Still let me know about the gravel on this side. Um, so I've just plopped a bunch of big farms because we're gonna need a lot of crops for what I have planned. I left this area over here so I can squeeze another, um, what are they called? Farm? They are called, yeah, farms. Large farms. So I'm leaving space for a farm here. I'll need to rethink a little bit the position of those farms and how to connect them with rails. Because ideally, instead of having um, specific storage for all of them, I want to consolidate everything in one place and from there take it away with trucks. That's my general plan. Next. Here I started the extension of the construction yard into the construction materials. So first we need a place to bring gravel. So I made a road, a rail, a rail connection, not road, Rail connection going over here with a train aggregate unloader, unloading into a two and a half thousand storage. Also connected with a heliport, and that's so in the future our heli our helicopters can go here, pick up what they need, and utilize it for construction. Three different loading base for trucks. Ideally, I want to split which trucks use which just to maintain their traffic, and I give them a bit of a queuing line. Bit of an overkill, but still. So here we have a construction asphalt plan, and I just realized I did not give you a heliport. Uh, let me quickly fix that. So for you, heliport, if we go with a three, we can squeeze you here. And I should be able to get anything I need out from here as well. Yeah, that should be fine. So you go down there. Let's remove this road. Can I merge you with this without making a node? Oh, no, not a tunnel. Or a bridge. Just a little... Yeah, that's better. Here is its own little storage. So they will bring bitumen over here to utilize for this. Ways to collect the waste from this. A new prefab panel factory. A dry bulk storage for the cement between the two. I was thinking of putting a cement factory over here, but first it's too big and it utilizes coal, which I'm not ready to utilize yet. Then we have a concrete plan again with an extension of heliports. Because moving forward, trying to build behind that mountain, helicopters will be very, very helpful, I think. And of course, a little open storage for the panels, so we can pull them out and connect them on this. I should probably make... I don't know if I want to... No, I think I'll skip connecting this this way, because I'm going to revisit this plan. These train tracks. So that's the construction material side for now. I threw a little gas station here, and I extended this area, just in case I want to build more stuff. We have a high voltage switch, 
with a few new power lines and then transformer that will take care of the needs of this area. Looking at our city, we had a few things that we needed to address. I had people with small kids that couldn't go to work, so I plopped down kindergarten. And looking at my happiness, I have a large volume of crime. So investigating here, my courthouse is fine, but my police station is starting to get overrun. It's coping, but not enough. So we need to plop another one down here. So let's get a new... Where are you? Here. Police station. We want a big one. And ideally, I want to squeeze you somewhere right here, but I don't think you will fit. So you will have to go here. Okay. We need to give you a road out. Let's go with something like that for now. And I'll see, because I need more housing as well. At the moment, we have 282 people who don't have their own flat, which is detrimental. I built a sports hall over here because people were complaining about sports. And something cool I found out. I got this idea from watching one of Fayamaya's tutorials. So if you use a bus and you take your students, sorry, and you take your workers from here and you drop them here, they will wait until they are, until they cannot find anything else and the hour expires. But if you allocate another place within the range, or in this case the large tray station, they will wait here for one hour and when that hour is gone, they'll be like, okay, I cannot find anything here. They will go to the next one to continue looking for work. And this makes a very nice chain. And also something else that some people may not know. If you say, when you, when you use a bus and you say, I want you to force all the citizens to step out, this works only for workers. It will not release students and anything else. So for me to bring students from this place, I had to set up a different line. Are you the student line? No. Where's my student line? I need to go rename those things. Yeah, so pretty much go here, load any students, and just bring them over here. And from here, you say any people who want to go to school or uni, and you assign them where you want. So I can start bringing people to get educated over here. Another thing about crime, if we look at not patrolled crime across the map, we'll see we have some crime in the steel industry, refinery, and the waste processing. While this doesn't have a huge impact, it has a decent enough, so about 2%. So why lose 2% efficiency when you can easily take care of it? And since I have workers here, I've been thinking, let's quickly squeeze a small police station here. It should have enough range to take care of this. So if I place you probably around here, can they reach it? Let's see. So, asphalt footpath, you can cross the train line. You should be able to cross the train lines. Yes, you can. Okay, so you go there, you go there. Yep, that's fine. You can easily get people. That's fine, and you don't need mats. You will get the heating and everything else you need. And, in theory, you can support about two kilometers far. So that's a little under two, so you should be able to cover all of those. I can straight away go for a big one. How many people do you need for the big one again? You use 60 people. That's a large volume. Now we'll start with a small one. And if we need to make it bigger, we will make it bigger. Uh, what happened here? What's wrong in this madness? So, you... Where do you want to go? Uh, you have no fuel. And you want to cross this. So, you're in this junction. Well, you're trying to exit this junction. This guy is waiting. So, the distance between those two is too short. That's why you have this problem. Okay, well, you can continue. And you will fix that grid lock thing here. Everything else will start moving. And I started bringing people here. We started producing our own chemicals. 
So I have about 50 tons over here fairly quickly. And this one is full, so I can turn it on when I'm ready. And if we look at overlays, resources, chemicals, we empty them in a timely manner. Obviously now we're not getting people because things are stuck, but they will get unstuck shortly. Things are moving. Yep. Cool. And I can start sending some chemicals here because this is getting really, really full. So let me do that now. I think I have a track here. I do. So clear that. Oh, no, not to scrap it. Clear the line. I want you to go down here. I want you to load chemicals and then I want you to go over here remove this and load chemicals until you're empty so cool so that will get the chemicals here and we'll start clean cleansing this everything else waste wise we're going well so if we look here yeah, pretty much we're burning everything that we're cleansing. We're building a little bit of gravel. We've got a little bit more still here to pull away. And this is our waste. So we purge it pretty good. Something else I wanted to mention related to the gas power plant. Now, it says it produces mixed waste. But it also produces hazardous waste. But this hazardous waste will split between a regular storage and the dedicated. I think that's a bug. Just be mindful of that. So when they pick it up, this will actually be hazardous. Very small amount, but still hazardous. For this future gas power plant, I connected it to my main grid. And I took an underground high voltage wire for 12 megawatts. I don't want to sell the full capacity because I need it to be a little bit of an overflow. And also, you are a little too high. I need to make you sink down a little bit. And you will connect all the way over here to do our exports. Which are to exports, so I don't forget. And that should be good. Gravel industry is built. We just need to finalize power requirements, water and sewage. I already moved some uh, excavators here. Some of my older ones. They're in pretty decent condition for what they do. I didn't finalize this. I'm keeping it on idle for now. Okay, so thinking of this... I will make another sort of factory unit over here on this side for clothes, imitating this setup as much as I can. Since I don't need that much crops, I need like 20 crops per day. These guys will need a lot more, so I can even sustain that with tracks. I don't think I need a line for crops there, but even if I do, I'll just branch this off and get them a train line there, and I can just make a little bypass on the side and get the other people over here for clothes. Because clothes do need a lot of people, ain't he? And another 100. And I need to be able to store a little bit of fabric for when I do repairs and stuff. But I think that's where I'm going to wrap today's episode. In the next one, we're going to set up the fabric and the cloth industry over here. And we'll need to decide where we want to store our goods and how we're going to pack them into containers and other stuff. I think that's the plan for the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. Sorry if this episode was a little bit all over the place. Lots of planning, lots of things to do. The joy of this game. See you all on the next one.